you know, uh, when we first did the show initially back at Lincoln Center, I could not believe that I was a part of it because it didn't really dawn on me what a great thing it was because we were working with all these pros. I mean, people like uh, Adelaide Hall, that's my roommate in the show, and I love that lady. Edith Wilson, Honey Cole, uh, Honey Coles, uh, Bobby Short, to be on stage in that hall with the orchestra was really like an artistic thrill. Then when we got ready to go to town hall and it started all over again, I really began to get very proud of my black heritage. Because by then I had done uh, Ain't Misbehaving. And I was beginning to find out a lot of things that I had been taught not to like, such as no one wanted to talk about Amos and Andy or no one wanted to talk about shuffling and all that. So then you go back and you work with these people and you see there was nothing wrong with it. It was a survival. It was something that happened. And even tonight backstage, I respect the hell out of everyone in that show. Uh, John Bubbles, to now be old enough to go to the Smithsonian Institute to be able to buy these things or go see a film with a Paul Robson or whatever, Robinson, you know, but. To see these things now, I feel very privileged to work with them. To have John Bubbles tell me when I come up, next time try this note, like we're doing um, Honey in the Honeycomb. I said, there's honey in the honeycomb. He said, hey girl, tonight, try, try this. I said, what? If there's honey in the honeycomb. I said, okay, Bubbles, I'll try it. I went out and did it, it works, but I'm not gonna give him credit for it yet. Also, things like uh, the guy showing me steps, working with somebody like Gregory Hines, who is really, I wouldn't say retarded, let's say he's a little off up here. <laughs> Gregory is so much fun to work with, and when Honey left the show because of the illness, and he will be back, beautiful man, I, the things everybody just drew in and did on this show, it's something that I'm very proud of. To see now younger people coming in and not being ashamed of, say, tap dancing and where you came from is really beautiful. I'm very happy to be in this show. I wish that someone would tell Mr. Wing, that's our producer, you know, to start begging for some money and take us to Broadway. I need a job. I like this show. And I think it's just as good as anything else that has been out there. The only thing is people have to be educated to know what they're seeing. So far, we've only seen um, shows that are like good news, remakes of musicals. But now to have these people on stage, I wouldn't leave this for nothing in the world. As a matter of fact, I left Ain't Misbehaving to come back to do this. I would not miss the chance of working with these people. And they're sweet. You should hear the conversations. I love them all. Also, to see, what else can I tell you about this show? The togetherness? You want to cut something? No, 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 no. Just move in and let her in. The togetherness backstage. It was one night I was upset about reading a review and to have everybody just jump to your corner, everyone there to protect each other. The, to be in a show where everyone is or was a star. No star attitude, no, um, I haven't had a chance to, you know, be temperamental, which is very uncomfortable sometimes. But to be there every night and just, I cannot, I don't know how to explain. We have more stars coming downstairs to see them than I've ever seen in my life. You know what it feels like to be in your dressing room and there is Mrs. Louis Armstrong standing there. There is Sylvia Sims, there is or Tony Bennett, or uh, Jack Lemon, or you name it, they're all there and they're coming there and they're just on first name basis with them and they all say, well, you must meet my little girlfriend, Nell, and Adel Adelaide, what can I tell you about Adelaide? If I could keep her here in the States, I would. They have more energy than anyone I know. Someone like an Edith Wilson, I don't know how old Edith is, but I know she's older than I am. Hmm. I'm 31. At least I hope I'm, yeah. Uh, Edith 
has this thing. One night, she changed the verse around in the song. And it was not a mess up. It can happen to any singer where you change and you don't know your ending. And she, she didn't know the band was going to play another verse. Edith went off doing bumps and all this stuff. And it's just, I don't know, the serenity of everyone is so beautiful. We have, um, I was saying in an interview that if I could be anything like those two particularly, I would be happy. In rehearsal, they would sit around waiting to be, to be worked with and nothing would happen. No, no, no gripes, anything except there. As soon as he hit the stage, he may be your man, but he comes to see me. I mean, it was, I don't know. I feel very good. And I just hope I don't get fired. Write me. Okay. <laughs> All right. I see. She's done the whole thing right there. Uh, well, let's see if there's anything in particular we want to. Uh, I want to talk about my side of the show. Okay. Okay. What is your. Go ahead. I must confess that. Um, when they are in the show, Gregory and I are, are really at, we have the advantage because we are not playing anyone per se. We are doing what we want to do. Uh, the ad-libs and the asides and songs such as um, uh, Pearl Bailey's, um, oh, I sing it every night. Legalize my name. I mean, legalize my name. I guess I have a thing about marriage, don't I? I can't remember legalize my name. Uh, the asides, I did not know Pearl Bailey did that or said those things. And we were taught these things. And I, for one, have not tried to do anything that they did. I pick up some of the gags, but I would hate for anyone to think that I am trying to represent Pearl Bailey. I am not. I would not do that. Uh, on Alpha Waters, the idea of trying to be out the waters is quite frightening. If there was a book, yes, I would. But otherwise, I am doing what I want to do, how I've seen it. I was fortunate enough when I did Ain't Misbehaving to see quite a number of movies that are no longer in print or little shorts that people had. And I feel good about doing things on stage. I. Uh, there is nothing I won't do on stage within the limits, you know. If the producer says, okay, it's in. And um, I enjoy doing it. For instance, we do a dance in the, um, well, some people wouldn't call it a dance, but then you're not doing it. The little movement Gregory and I do, uh, initially it was going to be a dance, but Honey got sick. And Gregory just stepped in the night of opening and said, we'll wing it. And it became a comedy, so we just dance around. So we aren't really trying to be a Bojangles and uh, a Eartha Kitt. I never said I could ballet, but I will wear a tutu. So I'm having a good time. I enjoy what I'm doing. And I, there was, I did get a, some bad press uh, for a while about what I do, but I am no... I, I, in no way am I trying to portray black women or any other woman in a low level. If you get upset about seeing my legs, don't. They're the only legs I have and I love them. I think that you'd be surprised how beautiful I am. <sighs> you ought to cut that one. <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, if I got you here, uh, uh... Wait, I want to ask one thing. I like to answer a question. I am not overweight. I am short. There are a lot of people who weigh the same thing I do. And don't forget that. Now, what else do you want? <laughs> what do you envision for your own future in this business? What are you looking for? My future in the business, as far as I am concerned, is not to close it off. I don't ever want to say I would never sing country or anything like that. I started out singing jazz, but I have not had a chance to sing jazz since I was 11. Believe it or not, I was 11 years old singing jazz. My first song was Mood Indigo, a blues number. 
But, you know, when people hear you build and they see that you weigh more than 101 pounds, they uh, automatically think that you're a gospel singer. No, I'm not. I did not sing at anybody's Baptist church. And for those of you who think you remember it, you got the wrong girl. I have nothing against doing that, but I want to be true to myself. I want to do just about everything I possibly can do. But this kind of work is really my forte. I like this. I like the live, I like the live audience. Did I just mess with this microphone? That is okay. I'm sorry, honey. I like the live theater. I'm not used to this. I'm very happy doing this. I would like to do concerts. I like to marry somebody rich too. These are two things I have to work on. <laughs> I'm sorry, won't we do that over, right? Sorry. I messed up the no, mic. No, no, that, that one is only for the line. Uh, okay, let's cut. Oh, wait, I want to ask one more question. Okay, uh, in your background, you've got a tremendous jazz feeling in your singing. And uh, uh, for your age, there aren't many kids that have that, not the 30 miles a kid, but basically it represents an era that missed all that. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll tell you something. When I was growing up, my family... My mother has never been to see me perform. My family is not into nightclubs or theater, and it's almost like wicked to them. I don't know why, but I accept it. Now, they'll see me on television. The first time they saw me ever was on the Tonys. Before then, it was like, well, you can always go back to school. You can always teach. But I have, to, I have to really blame my mother for me being in this, in this business. I started out with my, my brother, Bernard Taylor, who is a vice president of Kentucky State. Just give him a plug. Uh, he wanted to be a conductor. So every, every day he would sit on the stoop because we had to come straight off from school or else. And he and I would be there and he would conduct things to make me learn. And the first number I learned was Hallelujah Chorus. I knew it all around eight, between six and eight, I knew every line, all the music, uh, how great thou art. I had to learn all these things. But every morning we got up, we had a clock that went off the music. I grew up hearing, what a difference a day made. I grew up hearing, uh, dueling all day, all about it. I knew all these songs when no one else was doing them, you know, because uh, my brother had Elvis Presley, and I remember my mother caught him playing that. Aha, it was broken. You know, <laughs> no, no. But I grew up hearing, um, we have a, a collection of Johnny Mathis and all that. I grew up hearing these things, and I love Lady Day. I, as you might can tell, I sing a lot of her um, songs. I don't know whether I copied her or not. I will not say I didn't because a lot of things are instilled in the mind. But yes, I started out um, wanting to be these people. I thought all those songs were, you know, they were beautiful. I, I remember, I, I still don't know the whole song, but the song, like, I took a trip on a train and I thought about you. Yes, I thought, for some reason, I can only remember Donna Washington doing it in her version. So I guess I was born to be this kind of singer. I love this kind of music and I'm just hoping that something will happen. I know I've been begging George Wing to you know, try to help me be on Newport Jazz. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but you can write your cards and letters to Newport Jazz, 311 West 74th Street, give Nell a job. Okay, that's all I have to say. <laughs>